In this tutorial video, we are going to look at how to create an investment schedule in Excel. So let's start with what is our investment return. Let's assume we're going to invest monthly. So our investment return, let's say it's 6%. So I'll do plus 0 0.06, but we're going to make that annually. So I'll divide by 12 to show how much I'll make monthly. So that gives me 0 0.005. I'm going to come over here to the percent and hit the percent sign and then over to the decimals to make it two decimals so I can see that I expect to make 0.5% on a monthly basis. Next is my time. Let's say we're going to invest for our children's education over the next say uh, 10 years. So we're going to invest monthly for 10 years. So we're going to invest for the next 120 months. And then, what is our target portfolio? How much do we want to have for our children's education? Let's say we're trying to raise $250,000. So I'm again going to hit the dollar sign. It gave me two decimals. I don't want two decimals, so I'm going to go to the decimal and go to the back arrow and just make it $250,000. The next one I need, because this is an investment schedule, I want the future value interest factor of an annuity. So the formula for that is, you can hit the plus sign or the equal sign, and then you do open parentheses, open parentheses, one plus, and hit your up arrow, or use your mouse to go up to the, the interest rate. So one plus the interest rate, then close parentheses, shift six to get the little carrot, that's to raise it to the power of, and you wanna go up to the number of months. And then we wanna subtract one, close parentheses and then divide by your interest rate. So open parentheses, open parentheses, one plus the interest rate in C1, close parentheses, shift six to raise it to the power of C2, which is time, minus one, close parentheses, divided by C1, the interest rate. When you hit enter, you'll get a number of 163.8793. I like to do my present value and future, factor, future value factors in four decimals, so I'm gonna hit the comma that takes it to two, and then when I go over to the decimals, I do the right, uh, do the left arrow to increase it to four decimals. So let's see if we got it correct. So let's set up the schedule. Remember, the first column is time. The second column is your beginning balance. The next column is your interest earned. The next column is your investment, and the last column is your ending balance. I'm going to cursor back over to A6. I'm going to hit my shift key, hit my right arrow, so to highlight all of this. I'm now going to hit the bold key up in the top left. And then I'm going to come over a little bit and hit the center and get it centered. You can see the word investment doesn't fit in there. So what I'm going to do is hit the top left corner, it highlights everything, then just pick any column and right click on that column and do column width. And let's make it a column width of 15. And now with the column width of 15, we can see everything fits. I'm going to change uh, C6 is interest earned. I want to do interest earned, ED, past tense. So I go to that one. I hit my F2 button. That gets me into edit mode. I add ED on the end, and now I've got that. So let's do time period one. Time period one is our very first month. Obviously, our beginning balance is zero because we haven't invested anything yet. Our interest earned is our beginning balance times. So I do plus cursor over to the beginning balance times and then I cursor up the C1 and then when I get the C1 while I'm on C1 I want to hit the F4 key and you'll notice when I do that it puts dollar signs around both the C and the 1 that way when I copy this down it will always take the beginning balance for each time period but will also always use C1 so when I copy it down it doesn't go C2, C3, C4, C5 it always stays on C1 so I hit enter on that so again, let me show you how to do that. I hit the plus sign, go to the left cursor to get beginning balance, hit the times key, use the up arrow to go to C1, hit the F4. You can do the exact same thing using the mouse instead of the arrow keys. I just like to use the arrow keys. The next one is the investment. Remember for the investment, you take your target portfolio and you divide by your future value interest factor of an annuity. So you C3 divided by C4, hit enter, and then the next column, we're going to add across our beginning balance plus our interest earned plus the investment, just add those across. You can do that. You can also do equal 
and do SUM, which is a sum function. Open parentheses, do your left arrow, hit the period, then do the right arrow, so you highlight B7 through D7, and then close parentheses and hit enter. Either is fine. Now I'm going to go back to B7, and I'm going to hit the shift key and highlight B7 through E7, and then I'm going to hit the dollar sign for formatting so it's all in dollars. All right, period two, I go down to B to A8, and I, I'm going to do there, I'm going to do plus A7, hit my up arrow, plus one, so that increase it by one month, and hit enter. Then I go over to um, B8, and I do plus, and I do the up arrow, and I go over to E7, or you can use your mouse either way, use the arrows or the mouse, because my beginning balance is my previous time's ending balance, hit enter. My interest earned, I go to B, I go to C7, do control C, let up on the keyboard, do, do the down arrow, and hit enter. You can see there we'd make $7.63. On D8, because I want that investment always be the same, all I need to do is do hit the plus sign, up arrow, and hit that previous month's investment because that will always be the same. In my ending balance, I can just do control C. While I'm in E7, hit control C, let up on the keyboard, do the down arrow, and hit enter. So now I've got two months set up, so I'm going to go back to A8, hit my shift key, hold the shift key down. While I'm holding the shift key down, do the right arrow, then let up on the keyboard completely, and then do control C, then hit the shift key again so that it will anchor, and I need to have 120 months. I'm starting on row 7, so let's go down to 127. That will probably be off by 1, but that's okay. So while you have the shift key down, you can do the page down or the arrow down. Then let up on the keyboard, once you can do that, and just hit enter, and it will copy all of that down. Now I want to get down to the bottom of all of this. The easiest way to do that, since I uh, have a lot of data, over 100 rows, is you hit your end key, E-N-D. You can see in the bottom left that there is something called the end mode. When you hit that end key, E-N-D, and then just do your down arrow, it will take you to the bottom of that. And as you can see, I have one row too many. So I hit my shift key, hit the right arrow, hit the delete, and as you look, you notice that the last month, the 120th month, I have exactly my $250,000 that I wanted. To get back to the top, I can hit the control C and the home key, or if I were there, I can do the end key and to the left, the end key and up, and that will do it. So you can use the control home to get you all the way back to the start or you can use the end key and the arrows. So that's how you build an investment schedule.